Syngenta Crop Protection Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. Peter, why is red clover a really good option uh, agronomically in Ontario? So red clover is almost not just a, a good option agronomically; it's it's a must. And in in wheat, red clover does so much good for you. One of the main things, like let's start right up front with the big win. Whenever we look at cover crops in winter wheat, we've had tremendous challenges trying to get that transferred. So, so you grow this cover crop and you spend, for example, right now, tillage radish is the big thing. Well, it's $30 an acre for the seed. And then you try to follow that tillage radish through to the corn crop and say, what benefit does it give to my corn crop? And next year, did it give you organic matter? Absolutely. Is organic matter good? Absolutely. But is there any nitrogen there? And time after time, whether it's peas or it's oilseed radish or all these other crops, we just don't get any nitrogen contribution to speak of moved into the next corn crop. Along comes red clover, and it's almost like the perfect match with the next corn crop. So now we're getting 75 pounds of nitrogen out of that red clover crop for the next corn crop. And it's not just the nitrogen, we also get more corn yield. So if you put wheat in the rotation, I think we've talked about that, you get a nice bump to your corn yield. In fact, last year in the Ridgetown long-term rotation trials, they were talking about a 30 bushel per acre more corn yield. So 30 bushels per acre more corn if you had wheat with red clover in the rotation versus a corn soybean rotation alone. And is that 15 bushels for the wheat and 15 bushels for the clover? That's a little hard to, to sort out where that break point is, but both of those crops add more corn yield. So here we have a great rotation opportunity. We build organic matter and we do a tremendous amount for soil structure. A lot of farmers today don't moldboard plow anymore and that's a good thing. But back in the day when growers did moldboard plow, it was really kind of intriguing because if they had a soybean field beside a wheat field and they plowed crossways because most growers would plow north-south one year, east-west the next year, that was just the way they tried to keep the ground more level. And they'd be plowing across the soybean stubble and they'd hit this wheat stubble with red clover in it and they would immediately be able to shift up a gear and go a full gear faster where they had that red clover because that massive root system in the, in the surface soil, it's, it doesn't go 40 feet deep. It's not a super duper tap root, but realistically, most of our crop plants grow the bulk of their roots in the top six inches. And this red clover puts this massive amount of roots in the top six inches. And as those roots break down, they just do a phenomenal amount for the soil structure for that, that corn crop the next year. So you, you put all that together and it's just kind of like, well, why isn't every acre in Ontario, every wheat acre in Ontario getting red clover? And realistically, it should be. That, that's actually my question. You're painting a very good story here. It totally makes sense. Why aren't more Ontario farmers doing it? So in actual fact, I can say that one of the upsides this year is that we got a lot more red clover and wheat than we have in the past. So we were somewhere, in some areas at least, we were 50% of the acres got red clover, which is up from 15% five years ago. So we went 15 as in one five, up to 50% this year. That's a huge increase. But again, it's not every acre that's getting it, and a lot of that is because we don't get consistent stands. And so growers go out there and they put on six pounds or eight pounds per acre, and it's, you know, a dollar fifty a pound or something. So it costs maybe ten or twelve dollars an acre, and then they get this really spotty stand. So they'll have good clover in this part of the field, and they'll have terrible clover or none at all in other parts of the field. And they kind of step back from that and say, well, if I don't have a consistent stand, then all it does is screw up my tillage, it screws up my weed control, and I can't give myself any credit whatsoever, so I'm not going to do that. And a lot of growers are under this misconception that if I grow good wheat, I cannot get red clover. So if I'm a 110 bushel wheat grower, the way that I want every wheat grower to be in the province, then forget clover, because it won't ever survive. That's totally wrong. Is red clover, do, or pardon me, do root red clover stands vary based on wheat yield? The answer is sure. 
If you want to grow 60 bushel wheat, you will get a better stand of red clover. You'll go broke doing it, but you will get a better stand of red clover. I'm not interested in that. What I'm really interested in is 125 bushel wheat with a bunch of nitrogen on to get that wheat crop and still get my red clover stand. And it can be done. And we've a number of growers that have done that. It's all about rainfall in late June and early July. And what happens with red clover almost invariably is that if you get, if you get a lot of of dry weather through late grain fill in the wheat crop, you have this, this you know, big wheat crop, and if, if it's a 110 bushel wheat crop, it's sucking moisture like crazy, just pulling it out of the soil. And the poor little red clover plant, we don't want them up big because then he robs yield from the wheat crop. So we got this little wee red clover cr plant like this, and he's only got roots down this far, and if the wheat crop just robs all the moisture, he dies from drought. And so that's really where we lose the, the red clover crop. Now, fortunately, we have a, a researcher at the University of Guelph, Dr. Steve Boley, who we finally convinced to start breeding red clover for drought resistance. So if we could get a drought resistant red clover and increase the consistency of our red clover stand, then I think we'd see red clover on virtually every wheat acre. But even with an, a, a less than perfect stand, Typically what happens in those fields, and, and growers hate it, but if you think about it logically, so I didn't get a perfect stand. But most of the time, where I need the clover the most is where I get a little bit less wheat yield, and so my red clover tends to come in the poorer areas of the field where I need the better soil structure the most. So can you live with a little bit of inconsistency? My answer would be yes. The other thing about red clover that I think really makes it a no-brainer is the fact that and I really shouldn't even say this on, on a video of any nature because maybe they'll change it based on this, but you know, I spend $12 an acre to plant the red clover. That's seed cost and application and everything. And if I insure it through crop insurance and it doesn't establish, well, they'll write me a check for $24 or $25 an acre. So I'm up, you know, 12 bucks an acre, $13 an acre regardless. And that's if it totally fails. And if it's an inconsistent stand, I still get most of that crop insurance payout. It really is kind of one of those things where you shake your head and say, get with the program, use red clover. It's absolutely good for the soil and it works.